I'll bring the wine. Did you know that the word companion is Latin for with bread? We've long known that one of the most surefire ways to establish a friendship with someone is to break bread with them. And one of the best ways to cement that friendship is to share a bottle of wine. I'll bring the wine, you'll prepare the food. This is a show about great food, great wine, exotic locations, making new friends. You see, armed with bottles of wine collected from the world's best vineyards, we'll be visiting top chefs and learning their passionate secrets. And of course, getting to enjoy both the fruits of their labor, as well as the fruits of a noble vine. Cheers. Mi Ah, Argentina. It's truly one of the world's most romantic destinations. It's lush valleys, barren deserts, and great cities. And towering over everything, the majestic snow-capped Andes. Hi, I'm Claude William Genet, and while I'm neither a chef nor a wine expert, I am passionate about both and happy to share what I learn as we explore this amazing country, its intricacies and its delicacies from the friends we'll be making along the way. I'll bring the wine and they'll prepare the food. And you at home, just sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> The tango, <laughs> it's more than just a dance. It's a spirit that is both young But these are only words. Let's experience it. This is our Chevrolet Bel Air 1956. And uh, we intended to go on a, on a trip just for the fun of it. But then we decided, why be selfish? Why can't we share it with the rest of the world? This is not a contest, not a romantic comedy or a travel show. It's about a perfect marriage, food, wine and fun in the setting of the most beautiful country in the world, Argentina. But then again, I'm Argentinian. I'm Lucas. My friend back there is Ramiro. And just to keep us on it, we're bringing along a Canadian friend, Alex, who's young and opinionated, but uh, we'll indoctrinate him. That's what they think. As we arrive in Mendoza County and see the lush green vineyards, it's hard to believe that this area was, and remains, a literal desert. This is a really basic ranch. Don Chacon is the perfect example of the makeup of Argentina. His mother was French, while his father was an indigenous native. Europeans came to Argentina, fleeing poverty, war, and took this desert and made it more fruitful. They brought with them many of the skill of wine. Our friends brought along a very special wine to accompany the very special meal that our hosts are preparing for us. Earth First, La Tierra Primera, is an organic wine made from the hardy Bernarda grape which accompanied the first Italian settlers to the region. Virtually everything being served here is homemade, including this wonderful bread. And mostly comes from right here on the farm. La salmuera la preparé acá con sal. Los puñaditos de sal es la misma cantidad de harina que echaste. Yo caché cuatro platos de harina, entonces eché cuatro puñaditos de sal. La levadura echas una cantidad suficiente, eso más o menos. 
And now for the main course, which, well... Luca and Ramiro decided we were going to have some goat. As a North American, eh, not so sure. These goats are not stupid. They don't eat the same herbs and grasses every day. They would pick particular grass, they would mix naturally. And that gives uh, the goats here a very, very unique and particular taste. The preparation of the goat needs very little seasoning. Just some lemon, olive oil, salt and pepper. Et voilà. Okay, admit it. Your mouth is watering too. And Lucas was right. These goats are not stupid. And they're also delicious. I think we're going to need to cork a few more bottles of the earth first. Alex? So what is it about the Mendoza Desert and the Bernardo Great that makes the wines of this region so special? We are gonna, we're going to be received by this unique character regarding Argentine wine. It's, uh, Angel Mendoza is like the high priest of Argentine wine. Why, why is that? Why, he's been at the heart of the industry for, for 30, 50 years. To Mr. Mendoza, financial considerations and profitability come a distant second to the quality of his soil and the essence of his grapes. And he believes that's why his vineyard is so successful. So Angel, you're actually telling me that you can know how the vintage is going to be just by smelling the, the flowers of the grapes? Todas las mañanas que hueles con este aroma de la de la de la vid, este, esto es un anuncio que viene una muy buena floración. Uh -huh. uh, which which one is better, the the one of the from the top, the fruit from the top or the fruit from no, the bottom? Normal normally, this is more good than this. Uh -huh. This is for uh, uh, primicia, primer, uh -huh. uh, primor, uh, very young wine, uh, fruity. Fruit. This is concentration. Ah, so you got concentration, so the reserve and yeah. the grand, the iconic wines are here, down, and yeah. on top you got fruit, you got fresh wine. This is wines. fruit, this is con vol volume, concentration, more, more concentration. Ground wines, tannins. Need uh, water uh -huh. for irrigation uh -huh. because we haven't got rain, uh. rain, uh, same other region. Sí, sí, sí. Need the water. Y the sí. water eh, is uh, descending the mountain. How many, how many kilograms of grape per liter? Oh, one kilo, one bottle. One okay. kilo of, of grape need for So one, at the end it's 600, 600, 700 liters per bottle. Per bottle. And Señor Mendoza is a walking encyclopedia of wine culture and lore. And like most Argentines of his generation, he loves to spin tall tales. Like the time a hailstorm hit his farm, and in desperation, he and his family ran to the cross here to seek refuge, and by some miracle of divine intervention, the vineyard was spared. In memory of this auspicious moment, Mr. Mendoza opens a bottle of his signature champagne, oh, pardon me, sparkling Chardonnay. This wine is a paradox, and it's the iconic wine of, of the winery. Why is it a paradox? Because they don't use oak barrels to age it. And the, the important thing about this wine is that uh, you can taste the sun at the landscape. And it's really, really extremely good with no greasy food. Salud. 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 We know that a good meal is incomplete without a good bottle of wine. What we often forget is that a good cook is incomplete without a good olive oil. At Tapiz, the conditions are perfect for the production of both. 
There's a lot of mystique about uh, olive oil and where does it come from and what is the product. The product comes exactly from the land. It's very similar to the, uh, basically to the, to the vines because you are talking about terroir, you're talking about the land, you're talking about the climate, you're talking about the looking after the plant to be able to produce the excellent quality that you need for your olive oil when you're going to harvest because that is what will give you the quality of the olive oil plus the combination of am I going to harvest earlier, do I want a good quality but I'm going to have low yield as towards olive oil or am I going to ask the plant to wait a little while and then get the best of the aromas and flavors later on. So this is the mystery. The mystery is uh, taking, paying attention to the plant and, and asking her, okay, this is what I want in my olive oil. Well, this is a lovely wine. This is a Tapis Reserve Malbec 2007. Mm -hmm. Comes from the high altitude vineyards. And I think this would go great with uh, with what we call the Chivo a la Cava, which is the kid goat. Hey, didn't we have Chivo yesterday? Uh -huh. that was a, you, you had a really sort of authentic folkloric Chivo uh, out in the middle of the nowhere and in the middle of the camp. But this is something a little bit more gourmet. Eh? It's a, a Chivo made in a totally different, ma um, different way and it also pairs ideally with a smell back. So I suggest you try it. Uh, first goes the olive oil on the base of the, of the pan. And, uh, she's going to warm it up with, and put all these vegetables inside which are green and red peppers and uh, cut in chunks obviously and then the, the onion. Mm -hmm. The basis of the sauces is Chardonnay wine, rosemary, oregano and uh, a little bit of thyme and then a little touch of pepper of course, grind pepper mixture of different peppers inside. The goat, which is a roll of goat, which inside includes also, inside includes all those little herbs which she's cooking in the sauce. So they complement each other. This will be cooking for three hours. You know, the funniest thing about this car is that it attracts kids wherever we go. Even though it was made long before, even their parents were born. Our next stop is the legendary Siete Cocinas, the Seven Kitchens, so named for the seven regions of Argentina from which tonight's specialties originate. Amiro, this is very special, eh? Thanks for bringing me. Great choice. Let's have a Yes, guys, I know Paolo will have something very, very special for you guys. It's filled with a uh, soft, creamy goat cheese, just goat cheese, salt and pepper, and then use different Argentinian ingredients. Sauce so dried tomatoes, okay? Just in water, hot water, not salt, nothing. Almonds, just free. Unusual ingredient. It's a really special peach. And it's a preserve. It's made the preserve and it's from Kukui. We'll start with the sauce. Butter. The sun dries tomatoes. That's it. No more fish. It's the different kind of uh, acidity. The peaches acidity, the goat cheese acidity, and the sun-dried tomato acidity. This is you play. Creamy goat cheese, like mascarpone. Goat is everywhere, you know. In Mendoza, public squares and public parks serve double duty. Not only are they a place for people to gather, dance, and play, they're also designed to give everyone safe haven in the case of an emergency such as an earthquake. Next up, a visit with our friend Pato's extended family at the impressive Renacer Vineyards for a traditional barbecue called an asado. We're having an asado today, which is a tradition that has come for many years now and centuries in Argentina. And basically, if you see here, it's what reunites our family, our winery. I would like to also talk a little bit about our company, our winery, which is called Renacer. And Renacer means rebirth. Mendoza, at the end of the day, it's a desert. 
so no water at all and what makes it special is the closeness to the mountains the Andes mountains today they store the water which is so precious for us and by drop by drop we're gonna do a little bit of stress and that stress will make the, the, the plant to work and exercise a little bit and go towards that water and we're gonna get more mineralized more structure and elegant wines because of this water um, component water stress drop by drop Another great thing about Mendoza is the sunlight condition. It, the, the atmosphere is so transparent that the vines, they get a lot of sunlight. And that sunlight combined with the water, with the minerals that the roots are taking from the soil, are going to produce just the best grapes. Let's face it, at the end of the day we have great technology here. We use them. But what makes the wine special is the people behind it. That's Argentina. All this talk of wine is making me, once again, hungry. Let's see if our friend Pato knows as much about food as he does about wine. Milanesa, it's a dish that originally is from Italy. And in Italy, there's two places for Milanesas. One is Milano, which is more in the north, and the other one is Napoli, which is southern. And you know, in Italy, sometimes they don't get along very well, so there might be a little bit of a fight against whose Milanesa is the best one. But in Argentina, we don't have that problem, because here, nobody's asking what nationality are you, or where's your family come from. Perejil, mm -hmm. chopped parsley, y milanesa, covered with breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Normally, a milanesa is fried, but nowadays everybody wants to be healthy, so it's in the oven. Tomato sauce, after that, ham. And on top of that, a mixture of uh, mozzarella, the tomato, and basilic. And well, then back to the oven. Wow! If you think Pato's excited about the Milanesa, wait till you hear him talk about his premium wine, Punto Final Reserva. Delicious. Oh, that was good. Oh, that looks really good. <laughs> One thing you learn about Argentina is that great food is not the exclusive domain of fancy restaurants. Our friend Jacopo brings us to sample another delicious Milanesa, this time right on the street. I have lunch or dinner in five star restaurants, but to be in a place like this, a restaurant very really simple, it's, it's amazing. Very, very normal place of Mendoza with incredible Milanese. The best Milanese in Argentina and maybe in Italy. Ave Memento is a blend of eight kinds of grapes. In Argentina, it's, wow. it's not very simple to eat. <laughs> uh, extraordinary <laughs> Milanese <laughs> like this Milanese. <laughs> Our final destination is Salentine Vineyards. What an awesome sight. The stillness of the vast space, the great barrels. You can feel time working slowly but surely here, enriching the wines to delight our palates. Awesome. I think this, this wine is pretty fresh and delightful. It's going to help us to have a really nice lunch. It's dry and have a lot of aromas, so I pick this bottle also to have lunch with Facundo. Okay guys, if we have an agreement, 
Yes, yeah, so the battle is waiting in few yeah. months. Okay. Let's go. We brought this wine from the tasting, uh, Salentine Reserve Chardonnay and Salentine Reserve Malbec. What can you do for us? Um, Chardonnay and truth. Olive oil with uh, oregano, butter. Rosemary. Pepper and salt and the lemon mm -hmm. very, good. Oh, eh? mm -hmm. very impressive Perfect, and Malbec, Malbec is Classic empanadas. Are you sure? Empanadas. Yes, yes, no problem. Salud, chicos. Salud, Lucas. Salud. No debería estar juntos otra vez, doctor. Empanadas. <laughs> oh, very good. De empanadas. Muy bien. Impresionante. Well, we completed the first part of our journey. Wow, that was an amazing trip. Now, I suppose I, I could wax poetic about all the wonderful experiences I just had, but the truth is, I'm too excited getting ready for what comes next. More food, more wine, more adventure. I'm Claude William Genet. Join us again next time for I'll Bring the Wine, You Prepared the Food. <laughs> Fantangos mis noches perdí ¿Quién hubiera dicho Que por su cariño Diera tantos tumbos Como los que di He tirado una vida Por los cafetín Pa' mostrarle a todos Que ya lo olvidé Pero todo es grupo Si él queda rioso He llorado de mano Tu ronca maldición me lleva, tu lágrima de ron me lleva hacia el hondo bajo fondo donde el barro se subleva. Ya sé, no me digas, tenés razón, la vida es una herida absurda y es todo, todo tan fugaz que es una curva nada más mi compresión Our final destination is Salentine Vineyards.